Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Richie's Robots. Uh, in this episode we're going to make a device that's able to disconnect uh, any Wi-Fi client, computer, smartphone, camera, uh, from their Wi-Fi network uh, without actually even being on or connected to their Wi-Fi network. Uh, we only need to be in range. Now I want to stress this is for educational purposes only. It's very illegal to do this uh, and it's just being an irritating guy or person if you uh, go around and disconnect people from their networks. We're going to be using the D1 Mini, uh, which means that this will be only restricted to the 2.4 uh, gigahertz network, which uh, st still most run on. Um, it can't do the 5 gigahertz because the uh, processor doesn't support connecting uh, or communicating with the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. You could do this on a Pi, and that does support connecting a, a 5 gigahertz network. But for this example, we're just going to use the ESP8266 uh, chip on a D1 Mini. So let's just go to the whiteboard. Okay, so how uh, is this going to work? Very basically, you have a Wi-Fi router and you have a computer. And your computer is constantly talking to the Wi-Fi router. And for uh, various reasons, the router will need to tell the computer to disconnect. Uh, one example is when you're trying to sign on to the Wi-Fi network, if you enter in the wrong password, it will send a signal to say, hey, disconnect. You, you're not allowed on this network, so disconnect, and your computer will disconnect. Uh, other things are when you use Wi-Fi extenders and so forth. There's various reasons. What we can do, because it doesn't check where that signal came from or any authentication, we're going to make a little device that is going to send at 25 times a second a signal to the auth or disconnect from that uh, computer. The computer will disconnect, but they will immediately try to reconnect. But because we're sending 25 a second, it's just going to lock up the computer and it's just not going to be able to reconnect to the network. What can you do to protect about this and protect yourself from this? Well, if you're on WPA2 or below, nothing, nothing at all. Um, you still can't really get on the network because you've got to decrypt the, uh, uh, the uh, encryption and that's just about impossible to do. Uh, but you can stop people actually connecting to the network. The only solution is when you're able to use WPA3. And at the time, uh, this is the new uh, standard coming out. At the time, there are a very limited amount of routers that are doing this. Uh, so <laughs> right now, there is basically nothing you can do. Why WPA3 will work is it will use the uh, Wi-Fi frame 802.11w. More information about that is in the links to uh, on this uh, video, but that basically will provide some kind of authentication on the deauth to see is this really from the router or is this from somewhere else. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much how it works and uh, let's get on with uh, building the device. Okay, so we will be using these four devices to uh, make this little uh, device work. The first is the uh, D1 Mini, uses the ESP8266 processor. It has a Wi-Fi, this is the Wi-Fi antenna, also has Bluetooth. You have some versions that have a little port uh, where you can connect the, um, there you go, where you can connect the, uh, an external Wi-Fi antenna to give it enough range. Uh, this is giving me about 15 meters uh, so far, which is about 35 feet. So it's enough for uh, this demonstration. Little reset button there, uh, and it's powered by USB, but in this case, we'll be powering it by battery. And to do that, we need to use a device called a uh, battery shield. It protects the device from any voltage spikes. Uh, I believe it filters it out. And um, this port is for uh, powering the uh, uh, ESP. And this is for uh, internal USB to recharge any rechargeable batteries that's connected to it. We're going to come through these two little holes here with these wires. And then we're going to solder it onto those two pins there, the plus and minus, you see them there. All we're interested to is connecting the five volt and ground at the bottom there uh, to the five volt and ground pins on the uh, on this here. You see them also at the bottom, five volt and ground. We'll be putting on a small breadboard and we'll be using this little battery component, uh, which has a nice little off and, off, off and on switch with four uh, AA rechargeable batteries. So I've already made one. And this is the device. And as you can see, you've got the cables to the 5 volt and the ground, uh, going 5 volt ground. And you've got the cables coming up here. And when you switch it on, see, up, oh, there he goes. And he's starting up. So that's a little device there, uh, ready to go, quite uh, compact. Um, yep. Yeah. 
So uh, let's move on. Okay, so uh, you've downloaded the uh, package from GitHub, a zip file. Uh, the link to it is on my YouTube, uh, this video here, down below in the description. Uh, the first thing you do is uh, extract the zip file, and you're going to get this folder, and you'll want to go to here, and you want to open this file up. When you open this file up, you're going to get this code here. The first thing you need to do is change your JSON uh, version. You're going to probably have around 6.18 at the time of this uh, film. So you need to get it down to 5, or it's going to uh, give this error to downgrade uh, the JSON version. To do that, you just go to the Manage Libraries. Uh, being Java, Arduino is in Java, it's a little bit uh, slow than what you're used to with a, a program in uh, C or something similar. And then you go to JSON. And you will want uh, the one, oh, there it is, uh, with the hearts on it. Just remember that. But it's the Arduino JSON. Uh, as you see, I've got 5.3 installed, which is the one that you'd probably want to use. Um, that's the one I've found that works best. Once you've done that, you close it off. Um, you can also, you can do it for the interface, but you can set the settings here. Uh, you can say what is the SSID what password you want and whether you should hide the uh, SSID. Uh, a lot of other things here as well. So for instance, you could have it automatically uh, do a attack as soon as it's powered on, um, if you wanted to do it this way. So you could just set the um, uh, off here and say uh, start uh, automatically once set, uh, started instead of having to actually start it manually, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, once you've done all that, then um, you will power it on as you, I've powered on already on my little uh, battery pack thing. And then you'll connect to the network that it gives out because it's in AP mode. So you want to connect to that. Uh, now, Windows is going to take a little bit of time connecting because it's going to notice it has no internet on the device, of course. Uh, so as soon as it just starts saying checking network requirements, you're good to go. You'll then want to open up this and you'll want to... Uh, go to uh, this address, which is the default one. Oh, sorry, search for an app. 4.1, enter, you get this, blah, blah. All right, first thing you're gonna see is all the APs here, uh, and you'll see all the um, stations that it's able to find. Now, what you can do is you can do two things. You can try to, uh, or you can uh, de-authenticate or disconnect all the devices on an um, actual access point. So these are all my neighbors, and I'm not even on their uh, access point, but of course I can uh, disable them uh, because of the way WPA2 works. So um, I'm just gonna focus on my own, which is uh, this one here. And the device I wanna do is the uh, computer next to me, uh, which is this one here. So all I need to do is yeah, put a checkpoint there, that's it. Don't wanna do all the devices, then um, you know, here is another cool thing. You can make a, a fake SSID and broadcast it. So, for instance, people could connect to your uh, network and uh, try to put in their Wi-Fi password, and then you've got their Wi-Fi password. But that's not what we're showing today. Uh, and here is the attacks. You want to do a deauth. It tells it as one target. And uh, before I start it, here are the settings. So as you saw, it's got the uh, let's see channel and so forth. So you can set everything here as well. And then you just start the attack. And uh, you can see, uh, you, I mean, you're not able to see, but right next to me, there's another computer that's connected, the one I'm attacking. And let's see, it's still going. And it has started to disconnect. Yeah, I've got the pings going. And now you can see, you see it's sending 200 uh, DOF packages and it's just started to disconnect. So uh, yeah, it works quite well. Um, now I'm going to cut to an external uh, camera so that you can actually see this in action. Okay, so the device is switched on. The computer is uh, connected and we're on that page again. As you As you can see, I have um, turned a little bit down. I have some uh, Mr. Beast going. Big fan of Mr. Beast. All my family is, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, just turn it down a little bit. There we go. Oh. All right, and I also have pings running. And if you don't know what pings are, it's basically pinging a website on the internet and getting a response. 
So that will stop working once we start uh, deauthenticating this computer. This is a computer down here, uh, and it's got a D-Link USB Wi-Fi adapter on it. So what we do is we find that device, uh, and you can see here on my network, D-Link, and you can see the MAC address. So we just select it, we go up, we go to attack, it's one device selected, and we start. Now if we reload, I've increased it to two, yep, so 50 uh, per a uh, second. And already you see it's disconnecting. And because YouTube buffers, it already has some. So if we just go above the buffer, say here, you'll see nothing's working. Look down here, you see it's completely disconnected. We stop the attack. And it takes a couple of seconds to uh, reconnect again. Yep, see, it's reconnected. YouTube should start in a second. And you can see there, it's able to uh, communicate with the network again. I guess YouTube's just a little bit, yep, there we go. We disconnect again. And very quickly, he stopped. So uh, you can see how easy it is and uh, how effective it is at stopping uh, devices from connecting to your network. So, and of course you can do this from your telephone, from any device that has a web browser, you can just connect to the D1 Mini and the auth uh, or kick off anyone on any network. Okay, so say that you've got your uh, ESP A266 and you don't really want to use Arduino and get into looking at the source code and compiling, which I've shown you uh, previously. Then what you can do is you can just download and flash the bin file. It's probably the easiest and simplest way just to get the device working. So you can play around with it for educational uses. To do that, of course, all the links are in my det uh, details in the YouTube film. But the first thing you'll want to do is to go to the um, GitHub page of the deauthor uh, and go down here and you'll see that there is the releases in bin files. You'll just click here and download the uh, I 2.61 for your um, version of the ESP uh, A266. I'm using the Wemos D1 Mini, so I'll get this one. I'm gonna save the file, and you'll need a tool to flash it. I use uh, this flasher here, the uh, Node MCU flasher. I just download the uh, so, uh, zip code, the uh, zip file here, it's a zip file, uh, and then ex open it like this. You go to the Win32 release, open it, it'll extract it all, so forth. Does that, and you go back, and you run it here. Uh, just one point, you obviously want the uh, Win32 if you have a Windows 32-bit uh, or a uh, 64 for most of the newer computers. I'm running on this older computer. Uh, this is a remote desktop to it, and it's only just a 32-bit processor. Best thing to do is, before you start, is to go to Advanced and set this to D out. Uh, here, when you've got your um, ESP connected, like I'll show you, it'll come up with the COM port. So I'll just connect them up. And you see it automatically does it, but if it doesn't, or if you've got multiple connected, you can select it. Uh, and then you'll go to your config and you'll select your bin file. Uh, you'll see here in downloads, it's already downloaded. This is the D offer. Go back to operation and just click flash. It'll start and it'll have this little uh, bar going along and it'll say here, complete when done. Once you've done that, it's ready to use. You can, uh, it'll actually start booting up straight away because it'll be connected to the USB and you'll be good to go. So again, probably the easiest and um, a trouble-free way to get this thing up and running so thanks guys for watching another episode of richie's robots um i hope you learned some things today please remember it is only for educational purposes uh, don't be an idiot and go and uh, de disconnect your neighbors and so forth because one it's really annoying um, and two it's really illegal so uh, again just just avoid doing that um, in the next episode of richie's robots i'm going to show you how to build this little device which allows you uh, Whoop, should clean up one day this little device which will allow you to control a very cheap heater like this which you can get for about 10 bucks uh, and be able to control it via your telephone or via your computer uh, 
for uh, to a tenth of a degree. So um, it turns a pretty cheap heater into a pretty cool, uh, uh, you know, pretty uh, full featured heater. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I ask just if you can subscribe, it really helps me, it doesn't take much effort on, on your uh, behalf. And um, yeah, hope to see you in the next episode. Thanks guys and have a great time. Bye.